July 19, 2019, and I am interviewing Ike Glass at the Newkirk Public Library. What motivated you to join the military? And at the time, I graduated in 1952 from high school. Uh, the Korean War was still in, in going. You know, it was winding down, but it was still going. And that, 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 back in those days, everybody went to the service. You just felt that was like an obligation that you needed to do, and you did it without any problem. And that's what prompted. Uh, I read there were five of us from that class that, that uh, joined. And uh, we went to Oklahoma City and went through all the rigmarole there. And they had no place for us. They were full up. So they told us, you just go back home and wait, and we'll call you. Well, little did I know what the call was going to be. And uh, I got my call, but my call was for the Marines, which I joined the Navy. And uh, But the guy said, don't worry about it, you know, we'll take care of it. So that's how it all happened. It was just a, it was the thing to do. Tell me a little about your time in basic training. Well, if I'd have known then what happened was going to happen, I would have really been concerned. But I originally, uh, after they called me and they brought me to Hutchinson, Kansas, and put me in a school there for firemen. And uh, I was only there maybe a couple of weeks, and they came and got me out of, out of a room and told me they wanted something else for me to do. So they sent me to Olathe, Kansas. I had no idea Navy installations were even in these cities. And at Olathe, they, they were organizing a crew for do some experimental information for landing airplanes on carriers when the weather was bad or it was dark. And they were working on, there were 13 of us that they picked out to, uh, to, to perform. We, were, we operated directly with the Pentagon a couple of officers in the Pentagon that uh, directed us what to do and where to go. And then after that, it was a real ride every place. What was your primary job after training? After the school that they sent us to up there, we were working on an experimental project that the British had developed called Carrier Controlled Approach, CCA. And American carriers didn't have it. There was a big problem with American carriers when the planes were coming back aboard. Guys were fatigued. They'd been in the combat. It could have done a lot of things, you know, and there were just lots of crashes. And, and uh, lots of people got hurt bad, and that's what we were, were going to do, was try to develop a procedure that would work, and we could get planes back aboard carriers without any problem. That's how it all started. It, after that, it became a... A monumental task. Were you deployed? If so, where and for what? Well, uh, being uh, in the, the work that we did, we were deployed a lot on different carriers, most carriers. Uh, I've been in uh, the Sea of Japan, I've been in the Mediterranean, I've been in the North Sea. Uh, all of these were board carriers and uh, we moved around quite a bit. I uh, I guess that's what you might call deployed. We didn't have anything to do with it. We just they just took us. Okay. What was the most demanding part about your deployment? I don't think there was anything demanding. We just knew we had a job to do, and we were very interested in doing it. Uh, you know, I can't. We put in lots of long hours, and. Uh, you know, there were lots of 24-hour days that we put in, but we were we always had to be available when the carriers were launching planes or bringing them back aboard. Where did you serve the majority of time in service? I'd say probably the Mediterranean and that ocean there. We were, I can count, one two, three carriers that we were on in the Mediterranean <coughs> that we, uh, and, and consequently I got to see a lot of Europe. They, we made a report almost from the Gibraltar all the way around to it. Very interesting. We weren't any place very long at all, you know, maybe two or three days. 
What rank are you most proud to have earned and why? I finished out uh, with a rank of ACR1, that's Air Control First Class. That's as high as you could go as an enlisted man within four years. And I was pretty proud of that because there weren't many, many people that had that. <laughs> Which medals or citations are you most honored to have received and why? Uh, I was honored to receive them all, but I, I, I don't recall what they were. Uh, they're different for different things. Tell me about some of the special people you met. Well, again, I say that uh, I, I just met everybody who was special. I don't, I didn't don't think I met anybody that had a big problem with what they were doing or something like that. <clears throat> what was the best and worst military food you were served and why? Again, I couldn't answer that in a negative way. I don't believe, you know, the food was all good for us. We were just glad to get it. Tell me a funny story you experienced that could only happen in the military. Well, I think the, there were a lot of them because we were all we were, we were all having a good time, and uh, with our work too. I think that possibly Christmas Eve, Bob Hope, who you probably don't know anything about, was a great comedian and actor, and he was giving a a uh, program at, in Cannes, France, Cannes, or C-A-N-N-E-S, very, very famous place. And uh, they, they found out that, that we were tied up there, the carrier was tied up, so he decided to come aboard our carrier and on the flight deck and put his show on. Well, it was hilarious, it was hilarious. But what was so funny about it was that's the first time he'd ever been on an aircraft carrier. So he was just astounded by the things that they had, and everybody took him around, and they asked him if he would, would like to take off in a plane from the carrier deck, and he said, well, sure, he'd love to. Well, they were just kidding. What they would, when we got him got him in the airplane, and they started the, their takeoff run, that was all a joke. They only went just about 50 yards, and then he shut it down, see. Well, he was scared to death. He didn't know what was going on. That was the funniest thing I think I ever saw. There weren't many funny things that went on. Not many. Not in our organization. How did slash does your military experience affect your life today? Oh, very, very influential. Very, very. Coming out of the local high school here, uh, there was a lot of us that lacked discipline. <laughs> and uh, I think we all learned discipline. Yeah, that's one thing that you should learn. I, th I think that every young male should go into the military for two years or more. They will be, prepare you so much for the world to come. But, you know, the parents don't want that. And the students sure don't want it. Well, thank you for letting me well, thank interview you. I didn't do you. much. Huh? Thank you for letting me interview you today, and thank you for your service. Well, thank you very much, young lady. Ask him if he has any more stories. Do you time. have any more stories that you would like to share? Oh, I got a lot of them, but I think we're in mixed company here. <laughs> okay. Uh, That's okay. Uh, no, we, uh, there were stories every place. And uh, I, some local talent. There was, uh, I only remember two more guys that joined. We were five of us joined at the same time. Leroy Carson and Burl Butler are the two I remain. They're both gone now. But uh, those guys got in some trouble And when they were in San Diego. And I didn't go through boot camp at San Diego. I went through boot camp at Camp L.A. at California, which at that time, that's where they were sending all the Marines through boot camp. And uh, these two guys had gotten a little bit of trouble. Uh, on a weekend and ended up being in jail in Mexico. Well, the the, the uh, lieutenant that was uh, in charge of us called me in and he said, uh, how would you like to go down there and get those guys? I said, well, sure, I, you know, I wanted to help them. So, well, I, they gave me money and stuff like that to get down there. It was about 50 miles or so across the border. Uh, when I got down there, 
they put me in jail. <laughs> you know? So it was it was quite a mess. I was I was really concerned and very very upset, you know, that the Americans let that happen. But finally, we talked our way out of it, and all three of us got out and got them back up to San Diego where they belong. But stuff like that went on pretty frequently, you know, pretty frequently. And we saw lots of great things in addition to that, parts of the world. I think two of the most interesting things that I was involved in was we were kind of, we were called in and we said, hey, we've got to get, we've got to evacuate some Americans out of Beirut, Beirut, Lebanon. And they said, we're going to send, we send you two volunteer. You hear that? You two volunteer. <laughs> there wasn't any volunteer to it. But anyway, you're going into Beirut, and we're going to pick up a couple of Americans there, which the the uh, people over there thought they were in harm's way. You know? So we we landed, we picked them the two guys up. I don't even know what they did or why they were there, and then we flew them to Alexandria, Egypt, and let them off. That's where they were gathering Americans from the Mediterranean area because people, somebody thought there was going to be some real action take place. Then we had a similar type of thing happen again in Turkey. We went into Izmir, Turkey, and picked up a couple of, these were two ladies, picked them up and took them to Alexandria, Egypt. They were getting Americans out of there, you know, when, when they could. But I thought that was very unusual. I, you know, I've always remembered that. I don't know whatever happened to those people or what they were doing in Egypt, I have no idea. But the Americans were taking care of them. That was the most important thing. Since that time, there's been all kinds of problems over there in that area. For years, there's been problems <clears throat> in the Middle East. And uh, fortunately, in fact, we have a big problem going on right today. Our Navy shot down a drone from Iran. Did you know that? Yeah, it happened, it happened last night. <clears throat> serious, serious thing especially with what our president said, you know. But anyway, I'm sorry. No, you're it started. fine. Yeah. But thank you very much. Well, thank and you. Good luck to you, what you do, and, and uh, keep up the good work. Well, thank you for your service. Thank you, ladies. Here they are, volunteers.